Hey everybody, thanks for joining. Just gonna get set up here really quick. We're gonna start painting right away, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna let a few people roll in. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Thanks so much for joining in. We got a new color that came in actual gloss. We're gonna try that out. Get some modern mint going on. I also picked up a few items. Here's a painting from the last live stream so you guys get an idea of kind of the stuff that we do here. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe. Guys, this is really exciting. We are like maybe like 16 people away from 20,000 subscribers on the channel. Um, that's an insane thing to think about for me. So I really, really appreciate all of you joining in watching along. If you're not subscribed, subscribe now because we are almost at 20K for subscribers. I'm gonna be busy painting, but if you guys could let me know in the chat when we do hit that mark, that would be really cool. So yeah, without further ado, I picked up a few supplies today. A lot of people asking about different things, some stuff we'll use today. I got some palette knives, a few different types, and uh, I have here some sponge. What's it called here? Artist sponge, it's like sea sponge. This is good for trees and stuff. I haven't had this in a long time, so I'm excited to use it. I have this palette knife. Brand name's Artist Loft. We have the long, like kind of skinny one here. A fresh one, my outgoing palette knife is a little bit worse for wear. I'm gonna retire this one and I'm gonna use this one today. I've never used one like this before, but it's pretty cool looking. Got a little like rounded skinnier tip and I got a bit of a wider one too. So we're gonna play around and see what these things do. Picked up a new straight edge tool. So this is gonna be used for like little water lines, things of that nature. Uh, this is like the drywall section of the hardware store. As you guys are kind of talking about in the chat, I'm gonna buy most of my paint from Home Depot as well. Walmart carries it a little bit cheaper. Uh, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Walmart, but I think you can get it a bit cheaper there. I don't disagree uh, with what I'm seeing here in the comments. Montana is pretty good. Like I like it. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm really, really comfortable with Rust-Oleum. I'm going to start playing around a little bit more with some of these paints. Uh, yeah, I encourage you guys to experiment as well. There's no set formula for what you should be using. Got a few paint brushes too. Really just stick to the cheap ones because they get destroyed pretty easily. Here's a quick look for you guys at some of the recent paintings we've done on the channel since things have kind of been back. Um, you get the straight edge at a hardware store with the drywall stuff. Stuff where they have like mud and paint and uh, all that for drywall. That's where I found this. Bosjan says he uses uh, Montana or they use Montana 94. I cannot find that here no matter what. I might have to order some online. So we've been working on some paintings on the channel here. We have uh, this from the most recent major tutorial video we did. Uh, this is a really, you know, pretty basic piece that, you know, with the add of color in from our normal black and white we've been doing in the beginner series, this is what you get. If you guys are just tuning in, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're almost at 20,000 subscribers here on the channel. We're probably about like, 12 to 10 people away. Please let me know when we hit that 20K mark. I'm pretty excited for that. Another recent one from a previous live video we did here. And last live stream, we ran this thing till the camera died, literally. So a lot of you didn't see the end of this painting. It's still pretty incomplete. Maybe we'll try to touch it up today I don't know but that was a work in progress from last time too a 
So I do have some, uh, some boards ready to go here. Let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna wear my respirator for parts of this as well, guys, especially when I'm heavily spraying. You have a little bit of a breeze going on, which is nice. But in the meantime, let's get to it here. We're just gonna start off, I think, with a super quick, like truly quick space painting. and see where we go from there. Looking at this right now, I really have very minimal black spray paint. Okay, we got a backup can, we're, uh, we're okay. We have about half a can total, so I'm gonna be really sparing with stuff. I'm gonna change this up actually, and we're gonna go with a bit of a different look. I've been painting for about, oh, I don't know, five years, four years, something like that. Not all that long in the grand scheme of things. We're gonna do just like a little piece, maybe like more of a landscape type painting today to start things off, so. gonna take my green I'm gonna mist over this So guys, I'm gonna pop my uh, 10 away from 20K, that's beautiful. I'm gonna pop my mask on here. I'm gonna just power through a little painting. Uh, after that, I'll come back and chat with you guys for a bit and we'll continue on. First painting, I'm just gonna get warmed up here. So I'm gonna kind of just freestyle my own thing. After that, I'm gonna ask for some you know, questions you guys might have, some struggles you're having, having with spray paint art and maybe try to incorporate that and maybe a few different suggestions into the next painting. So I'm just gonna hammer this one out, get warmed up. We're not really aiming for perfection. We're just trying to get the creative juices flowing, get used to how the cans are spraying today and we'll go from there. Before I pop this thing on guys, it looks like we're about 10 subscribers away from 20,000 subs. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification button as well so you guys make sure you catch these live videos when they happen. Thanks so much for coming and here we go with the painting.
Hey guys, what's the subscriber count at the moment? Can anyone update me? For this part, guys, you're just going to want to lightly tap. And we're just going to hit those areas where the branches are. All right, that's really all I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm gonna just brighten up the sky and the background area. So for this quick color, we're just gonna point it in the middle. And brighten it up a little bit. At the start of the video, I mentioned this. We're gonna go in I think we're just gonna add a few sunbursts ever so subtly. Let's take advantage of this new little straight edge we got. I normally do not use the, uh, the fire drying thing, but uh, in the interest of having better results in these videos, I'm going to just do a little bit of it just to cure some layers of paint in between layers and see if that can help us along being able to do these a bit quicker. So back to quick color, straight edge. I'm gonna put it down over here, and I'm really just gonna run this spray can, spraying it about here, and do some nice little sunburst effects. You really need hardly any paint on this at all. And soften that up just a little bit there with some quick color.
All right, we're gonna go in with the sage green. It's kind of like a rarer color. I don't think you'll find a whole lot of the sage green out there. Uh, but if you have it, it's cool. I'm just playing around with a couple different shades. This border's on gray and brown, so I thought it would be good for the trees. I'm gonna use it in the rocks here that I'm gonna start to build, and then we'll see what we do with it on the rest of the way down. So I saw someone here in the, uh, the live chat already ask about uh, what the, the best thing for nice silhouette mountains are. It's really just some scrap poster board. Something like that. Uh, we're gonna use this for rocks, but it's gonna be the same thing. I have a lot of nice uh, details up here. I don't really wanna mess those up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little uh, scrap piece of poster board to just really contain where I'm gonna put my rock structures moving across this bit here. I think looking at this, what I'm gonna try to do, we're gonna have some mid-ground stuff over here. And I think I'm gonna do like maybe like a little river going down and, and possibly like a waterfall up here. So I might go all the way across with some rock stuff. I'm just gonna lay this down. Uh, and do a light burst just across. Maybe I'll do another little section here. Anytime you're doing this or this, you're having something catch your paint, you want to wipe it off. You're going to get some paint build up here. And when you put it down, you're going to get some issues. So uh, make sure you're wiping, you know, the excess off so it doesn't drip like that on your painting. So that's a little little look at how we're going to build up our rock structures. We do want some variety here, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit. You don't want them to look too too much the same. Still ten short. That's all good, guys. It's it, I thought you know it might happen during this live stream. So if there's any of you who aren't subscribed, please do so. We're almost at 20k. I think that's super cool. All right, this is looking all right here. Um, I'm not even gonna mess with this too much. I kind of like it. I think I'm gonna give some highlights to this one. I, I gotta do something. I'm not too sure what. I think I have a decent little idea. So if you're watching, just let this layer dry if you're really following along. Does dry time if affect the stuff? Yes. If you're worried about colors bleeding through, guys, absolutely. Let the stuff dry. Like these rock formations, let them dry. Then do the next thing. Um, you don't want to keep adding paint because obviously there's back in this little area, for example, there's background color. Then there's this tree. Then there's these rocks. There's already quite a bit of paint built up. So you really want to let stuff dry. In the name of this video, I'm going to like burn this painting, but I really don't recommend you guys doing it because I don't really feel safe even doing it. So, so it does seem to like work, but again, I'm not really super confident that uh, anybody else should be doing that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. We're gonna wipe this thing back off. Holy crap. Look at these bugs, hold up.
Look at these bugs. Whoa. I think they probably can blow up, to be honest with you. I'm not recommending you guys use that, but all these people tell me, oh, it just helps your cans dry so much, blah, blah. I agree it does, but uh, I don't know what that was. I could hear it like buzzing from <laughs> like a while back. And I looked up and there's a cloud of insects, so I'm not too into that stuff, but. All right, guys. We're going in with some Rust-Oleum Quick Color. These cans you really want to shake up. They're going to be like transparent, good for shadow, good for little effects. you guys are having a good weekend all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like use this to cover up just add a little black to each one of these um, I don't want to lose kind of the these little spaces in between I'm just gonna utilize those it's it's in the background this is gonna look quite a far ways back once we add to the foreground stuff so we're just gonna add some shadows so we can texturize it a little bit give it some highlights it's close to the light source so we're just gonna do that So now we gotta go and we gotta kind of rework this just a little bit. I think I am gonna add some like more fog kind of in the mix, but for now I'm just gonna texturize the planets a little bit. The planets, the, uh, I'm just gonna texturize these mountain areas a little bit, these rocks. I'm just gonna go in with this like, I think it was, plastic wrap to one of the things I bought, maybe the sponges. I'm just gonna lay it down only in the places where just this one rock are, if that makes sense. So kind of like that, I'm just gonna pull off some paint just in these areas, be pretty careful. As I go, I'm gonna use some clear coat, clear coat, clear coat to just loosen the paint up a bit. So we're gonna keep in mind, that's gonna be the brightest section of our terrain. These are gonna be, we want them to appear a little bit closer to the viewer. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of quick color white. I'm gonna fog this out a little bit. I'm gonna to add to this kind of like almost mysterious, bright, but eerie scene we got going on. For this, you really shake it up really good. This stuff comes out pretty light. 
If you spray it in one spot, it's still gonna build up. You wanna move your hand nice and quick with just these light bursts. You're just trying to work up some mist in, in this case at least, so. If you can see, I'm just kind of like flicking my hand like this while gently just finding just where it starts to spray out. So that's all we need to do. I'm gonna dry this again. If you're working along at home, just let it dry. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to do this. So we got that. We still have some black areas here that I want to bring, you know, to the foreground a little bit. All right, guys. Uh, maybe that. So anyway. I need some scrap poster board. I'm almost out. This is a very, very old painting. I thought I'd give you guys a quick look at it before I destroy it in the interest of making another painting. So, ugh, here we go. We're gonna go back in with the quick color white right now. So we're just gonna work these back in a little bit now. Same type of thing. I'm gonna try out this new little uh, palette knife I got. You can see it's really tiny and cool. And I'm just gonna play with this area. This looks good because it's got the light. This is a little too dark because it needs some of this light shining off of it. I'm just gonna break up these two kind of terrain forms here. Just play around a little bit. Key with these guys is you're not like, you're not just like keeping it vertical and just like scratching it in. You actually wanna like have some pressure and push and as you turn and put pressure, it's gonna affect how much of the palette knife you use. Um, and it makes a big difference. So play around with like pushing it, going different directions. You should be really skilled at this after time if you wanna be able to get little looks that you're after, so. As always, if you need to work the paint a little bit, you can do a little bit of clear coat. Ooh, I like this thing. Oh yeah, it allows me to get really fine lines. And in here we can just see little rocks, little things that add texture. What's going on?
So we're just gonna work some little details into this now. Whoops. And that looks pretty good for our next little bit. Yeah, this palette knife could definitely be added uh, to add paint or use to add paint. You just spray it off to the side. You could scrape some on and you could just chisel in some mountains or whatever you really wanted. It's just called a palette knife. I've never really seen this style before, so I bought one, but I have a few um, different uses, I suppose. One thing I am going to try to start to incorporate, I think, is some water going on in here, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out as I go, but I'm gonna add a little bit of details over here. Um I'm gonna go back with my same sponge. I'm gonna add some just bushes and stuff. We do a bit of black. Now we're getting deeper back into the painting. I'm in the sage green I have. I'm just gonna lightly tap. I'm gonna to try to keep these little fibers in place. That's really not adding a whole lot to what I'm trying to do here. So uh, <laughs> that's totally fine. Uh, I'm just gonna play around. I don't know what I'm really gonna do, but I'm gonna start adding a bit of stuff in here and see what we can do to make this kind of come together. I'm gonna use this new color, modern mint. So modern, everybody.
So all I'm doing here is I'm taking some paint off to the side, scooping it up on my kind of broad palette knife and dragging it back and forth. I was trying to add some paint in. I'm gonna get the effects here of like a little river flowing through. So I don't know, I like how it's kind of looking. We're gonna play around. Okay, that's what's working. We're gonna do the same motion, but kind of drag down as we go. And yes, I do see this. Mistakes happen. There you go, voila. All right, I kind of like the way it looks. I'm gonna go for just like a little waterfall here. I'm gonna clean this off so there's no other paint on it. And then I'm gonna make sure that this is dry and I'm gonna try to use a wa make a waterfall with this palette knife. I think I can make it work, we're gonna find out. Thanks for watching everyone. I kind of, this is going a lot slower than it would be in my head, but uh, nonetheless, I think we're on to a pretty cool painting. So we're gonna keep, keep chipping away at it. Uh, hopefully this is engaging for you guys. I do plan to do one right after this. I'm gonna go through the comments that you guys have left and kind of try to incorporate some of the questions you were asking about into the painting and you know see what we can do there. But with this one, just having a bit of a good time trying to come up with a unique little nature scene. You can just spray your palette knife down with some clear coat and then wipe it. The key is like not forgetting to do that, which is pretty hard. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take some white here. I'm gonna take it off to the side. I'm just gonna spray a gloop on here. I'm gonna lay that gloop on right over here and just do like a little bit of a waterfall effect. We'll see if it works.
So what I like about this, it's not perfect, but I'm gonna come back in with that other color. Our brand new modern mint. Spray a bit of that on here, and I'm just gonna play around with this a little bit. That's good enough for my purposes. Now I'm gonna take my straight edge and quick color white. And I'm just gonna do like a tiniest little burst there. So if you guys really watch and make mistakes all the time, overspray shouldn't come over the rocks. And it's honestly making this waterfall look a little weird. We're just gonna like etch the rocks in so they overlap the waterfall a little bit. Clear coat. Palette knife, and here we go. All right, so that works for me. So this stuff is artist sponge or sea sponge and you just want to like lightly tap this.
All right, I'm gonna use just a little like kind of straight piece of this artist foam sea sponge, whatever. Get the black straight piece going. I'm gonna try to work these into some nice little trees. Thanks for watching guys. If you're still sticking around, much appreciated. Right after this, and I'd say I got about three, four minutes left in this painting. We're gonna jump right in answering some of your questions. So thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, how many subscribers are we at? I know we're, we're very, very close to 20,000. If you're not subscribed, please do so. This channel is all about learning the wonderful world of spray paint art and helping each other learn and grow as artists. So thanks again for following along today. Now we're just gonna tap this in. Little bit of green, little bit, just a tiny smidge mixed with black.
this is pretty much gonna be a wrap on this one. I am going to just do a few little detailed things, make a couple little things stand out a little bit more and we're gonna be pretty much done for the day. Not for the day, for this painting. And we're gonna jump into answering some of the questions you guys have, trying to do a little painting together, maybe incorporating some of the stuff you guys are worried about and we'll go from there. All right, that's gonna be our painting here. Let's check it out. Uh, it could be a few more things to do here. Do you guys think this camera quality is better or worse or what? I don't know, I'm just using my cell phone, so hopefully it's decent. All right, to sign my painting, I'm gonna use this knitting needle. And uh, yeah, then I'm gonna clear coat this puppy and probably call it a wrap for this painting. There we go.
right. Nice little landscape painting today, guys. We didn't do, how do you sell it and price different paintings? Also, how did you get into spray paint art? Well, that's a long story. So I got into spray paint art uh, kind of in a roundabout way. I was on a road trip. I bought canvases and acrylic paints. Our friend gave them to us actually from the dollar store. Tried to paint space stuff, couldn't. And in the end, what happened was, uh, I recall people being able to do cool space scenes with spray paint. I picked that up. I hit YouTube, just like you guys are doing. I tried to figure out how to like decode this art form. And I just kind of went at it. I took from different tutorials and uh, yeah, worked my way through everything, started making some videos so you guys could learn alongside me and the rest is history. There's our painting for now. Now it's time to answer some questions I've been getting uh, recently. Let's look through the chat first here, going right back up to the top. So thanks for everyone who commented. Where can I buy spray cans? Typically the hardware store is where I'd start or any other art store. Best way or technique to make really cool mountain silhouettes. Uh, three really, really quick ways here. So uh, first one, Take a palette knife, put some paint on it, go in and start literally just smearing the paint around in the general shape and form that you're trying to achieve. So you're literally just smearing it around on here. Uh, when I started spray paint art, I'm gonna say I was probably 26 years old. Guys, we're five subscribers from 20,000. That's pretty awesome. I'm really gonna have to plug my phone in here, I think. Give me a quick sec. should have some battery life still. Okay, we'll charge it up, we're charging. All right, back to mountains, you smear the paint on here, you might need definitely some more. Once you kind of have it, you can even go in, you see we had some shades of green from our last thing. We can go in with more green using the same technique with your palette knife. And all we're gonna go do is go up one side of this rock face, obviously with a bit of a lighter color and a highlight color being our green. You can scrape some off. And you see a bit of a distinct line between the two here. You can take your clear coat after that once you've got a dark side and a light side and you can come in and really just start adding highlights and different things into the mountain side etc this is a really really rush job um, i do have a tutorial on this this is not really a conventional method and you usually have a background but let's say you're just talking the pretty standard way Easiest way to do mountain silhouettes, 
put a color underneath. We're gonna use the weird green black combination we had before. Ideally let this dry a little bit. I'll usually put a neutral on top of my black. So um, a color, then typically black doesn't have to be a darker color. Then I put a lighter neutral on top. Then I take a plastic bag or a magazine paper. I'm gonna lay this down. I'm gonna guide where it's going with my hand around the mountain. So I'm just gonna lay this down on here. I'm gonna trace it out a little bit, really light, like barely even touching it. Just guiding this along on where it should go. Pulling it off. You're gonna see it looks really muddy. If we have a lot of paint on there, if we let it dry, it's gonna look better or we can go back in. And start bringing the mountain or the rock in this way. Other quick, really, really easy alternative. You just want like a little rock structure like that, let's say. Uh, you could just rip something out of poster board. Whoops, that's white. Rip something out of poster board. Go in just like that. And peel it away. And you can get some really cool stuff. We are two away from 20,000 guys. That is awesome. Um, I started this channel way back. I was digging all over YouTube trying to figure out what the best, um, you know, tutorials, the best advice out there was to try to get this figured out for myself. I just really started compiling little tips and tricks that I was seeing in other videos. Oftentimes they weren't even tutorials, but I would watch like slow motion and try to figure out what they were doing. Uh, I'm still on this journey myself, learning how to do this, this cool thing we call spray paint art. Um, it's cool to be on it with you guys. And it's really cool to know that we took a channel and grew it to a community of 20,000 people. We're very, very close at least. So thanks so much for that. So here we don't really have much going on, but we're gonna do, why not? We're gonna do a little scene on top of that. Let's see if we can incorporate a little bit of advice or request for advice. Uh, I would like to cover the crappy part of my kitchen wall. Is that good? Is it the same technique? You'll wanna prime it. I've painted on drywall before. Um, when I did, I actually used like Montana gold cans. You might get a better result with that. I would say try a little small section. You don't care about messing up and see uh, when you start to paint vertically on a wall, you gotta watch paint dripping. And there's a lot of different factors. Also spray painting inside of your house is gonna really, really stink for some time. So factor that in whatever you do. How'd I learn to do all this? I did all of this uh, from doing what you're doing right now, watching other people on YouTube, all the different kind of artists that were out there at the time and just piecing together, trying to mimic what they were doing and figure out my own style. So. How do you sell it and price different paintings? Well, you sell it by going to local farmers markets, uh, art walks, festivals, things surrounded, surrounding art and getting your art in front of people. You retail it online. You can do a lot of different stuff. Uh, for pricing, you need to find the best price point that's gonna make someone enticed to buy your painting um, while not having it be you know, too cheap where you're not, you're not rewarding yourself for the time spent. Pretty good quality for a cell phone. That's awesome, that's good to hear. Uh, just need a fishing pole, you rock man. Thank you for the love guys. Love you man, you're the best. Thank you, mi gusta mia Marte. Uh, Jake Plummer, yo, what's up? Stone P, looks awesome. Tried water effect and ended up ruining my painting. You look easy, but it's actually not G's. Water's tough, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, try doing what I did, which is just kind of working it back and forth with some kind of like palette knife or something and see what you could do with that. All right, guys, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. We're gonna just start chipping away at and turning this awful little tutorial example 
into something. I got a guy who's trying to turn around his truck outside of my garage area. I think he almost hit my car. One away from 20K, guys. One away. If you wind up hitting the subscribe button and you're the 20,000th subscriber, let me know. I'd really love uh, to find out who it is. It's going to be pretty hard to do that. Really, really close. What are you guys struggling with in this, in this art form? Let me know. I'm going to try to incorporate it into our painting right now. So um, what do you guys need help with? All right, where are we at, guys? Oh, 20K, all right. I'm going to crack a beer to that. Someone's suggesting storm clouds. We're going to incorporate some storm clouds into this. Bigger canvas is way easier, by the way. Way, way easier. Um, more space to work. More freedom. All that good stuff. All right. Thank you guys so much for 20,000 subscribers. That is phenomenal. Um, it was a goal I remember maybe a year ago to reach 10,000. So thank you so much for all of your support following along in the channel. Hopefully this is the start of things to come. I now have a studio space as you guys see, um, we're gonna keep painting. I just wanna say a very humble thank you very much uh, for 20K. Wow, it's, it's an honor guys, so let's get back at it. This is the view, by the way, when I paint. So here's what I see. I have the phone up here, and I basically have to kind of like hug this thing and have my arms just down below, but it works. Got a whole lot of spray paint. Got a whole lot of stuff that looks like junk, but is actually, you know, helpful spray paint art stuff. Uh, what do we got here? Got some celebratory beers. So I'll crack one of those to you guys. Cheers for 20K. How's my thumb looking? I don't have a Discord and I don't really know what it is. Is it just like a chat? Uh, like a Twitch channel, is it like that? I'm really liking these live streams because they're, there's not any editing involved and easy. Yeah, it's a live video. Yes, I do. It's my wife, internet. <laughs> uh, uh. Hey, we hit, we hit 20K by the way. Yay, <laughs> That's my lovely wife. She puts up with my craziness. All right. Oh, there's my right legs. I got an idea. Oh wait. Oh, someone wanted like storm clouds. All right, let's let's play around. I'm just gonna play around with this quick color. I'm not even gonna use like. Rust-Oleum, the thick stuff. Let's just see what we can do with this. Thanks. Thanks, Wellen. I think I'm saying it right. Wellen, really appreciate that. Thank you, Jin, for Lynn, for the congrats. It's more just a place to chat. I was wondering because I want to know if there's a way for people to send you photos of their work. Um, honestly, you can send them on Instagram. I've been trying to respond to a lot of you. 
I know I've chatted with Wellen on there. I've chatted with, with quite a few people I see here in the live stream. So yeah, you could definitely send me them on Instagram. I do need a more efficient way to, uh, to chat with you guys. So maybe I will, in fact, uh, hit up a Discord or at least check it out. Okay, so I'm going to go in. This is light paint. I'm honestly going to leave some white space uh, and see if we can get our storm clouds that way. I'm just going to go in, kiss the edges here. I'm not really going to overwork much. What is my Instagram? Well, it's the same exact name as my YouTube channel. Thanks a bunch. Finally been able to sell my art now. Hey, that is awesome. I hope you guys do like get out there and try to sell your stuff once you're comfortable with it because 100% uh, it's an expensive hobby. Like you put some serious bucks into cans and stuff if you're anything like me at least. Thanks for being so genuine. It really makes it seem like I could do more as I see you fixing errors and talking us through it. Oh, I mess up all the time, all the time. This is a picture. This is my pain. Now I want to preface this by saying, I'm not saying this is a bad painting. I'm not saying it's horrible, but this is the first painting I did in like, I don't even know how long, a year. This is the first painting I did when I got back. Um, it is not at all what I was trying to do. And it looks kind of cool, don't get me wrong, but I really like, this thing really fell apart and it at one point was looking super cool. So I don't know, uh, I mess up all the time, but that's part of learning. I've uh, thrown away a lot more paintings than I've ever kept. I use Rust-Oleum for the most part, this quick color brand a lot. All right, we're back at it. We're trying to do just some like kind of stormy night sky stuff. So kind of, whoa, you guys ever do that? Yeah, you do, I bet you do. It's the worst. All right, we got just some mountains here. We have some night sky. Legitimately don't burn. Don't use the fire technique or whatever, but I'm gonna do it, okay? I'm just gonna do it. And sure, actually oh, that does work. It's very dangerous. I'd really like to not uh, burn my place down. So hopefully that goes well. All right, we got a little bit of something, something going on up there. Honestly, I use these quite, oh no, this one's got paint. All right, I'm gonna throw this out there actually to you guys. Hold on a sec. I need my charger again here. Can I zoom? Oh, is that focused? Okay. Is that better? Is that, you like that? Okay. So for those of you guys who are following like along on Instagram and you're submitting your paintings, uh, drop, like when you send them, if you guys want, I'm exploring the idea of basically like doing some critiques or some advice on some of the paintings that get submitted to me. Um, but in a video, so it kind of give me giving you a shout out, um, honest, just genuine critique. I'm not here to like roast anybody. I like to see everyone's work and I think it's beautiful from the beginning stage, the expert level. Um, I can appreciate that. I've, I've been through all the struggles too. So if you guys want some actual advice on your paintings and you want to be included maybe in a future video, uh, when you do send them via Instagram, just include a message that, Hey, feel free to use this one in the video, uh, just so I know I have your consent to kind of talk about your painting. And that would be pretty cool. So yeah, you can tag it, whatever, just some kind of comment saying, it's cool to use it. Sorry for the burp there. Uh, I'd be happy to kind of work that into a future video. I'm just gonna take a little stock card here. Again, we're just ripping. I like this. I don't know why. Um, quick color white. 
shake the heck out of it. Well, it's not really a night sky anymore. It kind of looks cool. We got some, some light going on. I'm gonna try to go in and do like one little lightning strike or a few in here, but I got a feeling this is gonna make it look like crap. So we'll see. This is just kind of playing around. We're incorporating your ideas just in a little like scrap piece of the poster board. This is not supposed to be a masterpiece. Um, we're just talking about creating different effects and, and ways you could do that. I think that helps a little bit. All right, anyway, that's close enough for what we're trying to do. Now we got some mountains in here still. Uh, so let's do a little bit more. Bring our mountains back into view. Our little night sky is gonna be in the background. At this point, I do guess we could do a few stars. One way you could do stars, you're gonna spray, spray paint onto this. Flick it off, like flick it off to the side there. And then this. You just hit it off your finger. Now, a lot of those are too big, I would agree. Another thing you can do, we're just messing around, giving little tips and advice. You can go in if you have a big blob like this. You just pull it up, push it down. Turn your hand, your palette knife the opposite side, go out and go over. Uh, it can be kind of a cool effect if you're trying to mix things in. We obviously are gonna keep our uh, mountains coming in, so let's do that. This side first. So now we're gonna wait, like we're not gonna go right away. I usually would, but we're gonna just chill for a minute and then we're gonna come in and do this. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna blend just a little bit with a little bit more black up in this corner. Little bit more white and just all right. Has anyone been here for since the beginning of the stream? 
We're just gonna push this down. We don't want it to dry with our paper on it. As you see, it's pretty cool effect that comes out. Um, All right, guys, now here's the thing. When you're doing these, these texturing, these rock surfaces, um, it really is important to give it a bit of depth. I'll tell you one thing I think I'm guilty of. I think I'm too guilty of going in and etching just a border around everything. Uh, that's really not how these things look in real life. I'm gonna do a little bit because I can't resist on this one. It looks really cool to me up close. I'm going to give you guys a bit of a better view, maybe. Like, it's, like, pretty cool texture. Um, I think there's something to be improved upon there. There we go. Now, you know what, for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna leave it. I always get sidetracked, let's keep going. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna do something across this way now. Um, so I'm gonna put another layer of black. We've kind of lost our night sky in the background, but we often put too much emphasis on stuff we're gonna cover up anyway. Now we're gonna come back with the Rust-Oleum Quick Color White. There, we just completely evaporated our, uh, our sky. This time, instead of waiting, we're just gonna go right away and we're gonna see what difference between that one and this one, um, as far as the way they look. So I would say in a way totally different, see the other one in the background now you get this nice kind of like haze or light line behind it it looks really cool um, I do like to kind of go in when the white's fresh you can let the black in the back dry a little bit but when you spray that white on I go in when, when it's a bit fresh and you get some of this like mountainy rocky um, highlights it almost looks like snow some sometimes shooting stars sure so uh, this is technically a mountain in the background. So we're gonna do our shooting star like going across this way. Shooting star is easy, uh, kind of. So make sure your cap is clean, get a blade. Don't do it over top of your painting. So I'm gonna go off to the side, but I'm just gonna like shave this off. It's perfectly good. Shake the can really good. I like to use this quick color when I do this part. Spray it off to the side, um, like so. Get a few sprays going, shake it up again. You cut the tip, you shook it really good. You know you're getting a good stream of paint. Um, the next step is to make sure that whatever is happening, uh, whatever you're putting the shooting star on is completely 100% dry. This is not. I touched it. It stuck to my finger. So don't even risk touching it because you're going to ruin your paintings that way. The right answer is just take your time, let this dry, and then we're going to go into the next step. For just quick purposes, I'm going to do this. I don't recommend you do that. Do what I'm about to do. Don't do what I'm about to do. Yeah, I got a hunch that's dangerous, so um, I'd avoid it. All you're going to do is you're going to take your can, turn it upside down, and point this tip wherever you want the shooting star to go. 
Requirements are clean tip, good spray coming out, very shaken can, completely dry base that you're putting the shooting star onto. And now when you put it down, it must be completely flat. And you're just gonna push down on it. I'm gonna turn this away just in case. Push down on your painting evenly in one quick burst and release and pull it back after you've stopped spraying and you should wind up with something that looks like a shooting star. Let's give this a shot. So shake it up really good. Just a little effect uh, bursting across. I actually like it. I think it looks pretty cool. Maybe it's a spaceship coming out of like some alien planet. Who knows? Hopefully that's helpful. That's how I do it. I would not do it with Rust-Oleum. I would use this quick color stuff for that because it's a lighter touch. Uh, someone was struggling with water, so I'm gonna slap some water in here. Uh, keep in mind, like, if it's just the water line in the horizon, it's gotta be completely straight. But we see a lot of paintings of the water lines just completely straight. If this is like a, a view, a real view that we're seeing, there's no problem that like, there'd be little jut outs in the coastline and whatnot. You wanna keep that kind of 3D-ness and throw that in. Uh, I'm really bad, we're just doing a straight line. So we're gonna do it a little bit differently here. We're gonna do just a tiny bit of black. So we're gonna put some black down. Most of this painting is black. We're gonna want a few black highlights uh, in the water. I'm actually gonna dry this layer as well. Now, because of how we've been going about this, Okay, this, this quick color is made by Rust-Oleum. It's got a littler cap compared to the Rust-Oleum cap. Less pressure comes out of the can. Uh, it's a thinner paint, I would say. Uh, so it looks more like, like translucent and like smoky, whereas the Rust-Oleum stuff looks very dark and it comes out very fast and thick and a little more light and misty. So for this water, I wanna preserve some of this coastline so I can kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna go in and spray some white in, but I'm not gonna spray it just like straight across. I'm gonna to try to take control over what I do here because I can always go in with a palette knife and touch up the water to get to the edges I want. So I'm just gonna use this straight edge to block some paint as I come in, just so I'm not getting it places I don't want to. It's gonna look a bit unnatural and that's totally fine. Uh, another thing I'm gonna do. Just a nice misty little haze here. I bought this stuff for $6.99 at the craft store and, and I think that's garbage. Hopefully you can do better, uh, but I got it at Michael's specifically. I'm gonna whip off a piece that kind of looks like a tree, I guess, in general. Uh, that's a little too big for what I'm trying to do. So keep, keep it triangular. That's kind of good. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna go in and give like the essence of some trees in the background. Uh oh, oh no. Definitely need clear coat here. How are you guys doing? Thank you so much for watching along. I would have just been doing this in my garage alone anyway, and uh, it's nice I get to share with you. So clear coat, I'm just gonna try to put a few trees in. Just tapping little little kind of tree-like patterns in, you really can be pretty subtle with it.
any of these back ones further away, they don't even have to really be there. I'm just putting the idea of them in. Oh, I'm hitting Bob Ross note. I can feel it. Just happy little trees. I'm just going to give the illusion there's a little more going on than just simply, you know, some fog in the background, something back there, some trees, or some whatever. So that looks kind of good. Now we're going to go in and do some water. For that, more white. Get a glove, just do it. A fresh glove. And now you're just gonna go in. And you're gonna like, whew, that's it. Whew, that's it. That way. Oh, you don't wanna go like, ooh, back and forth. All of this is gonna turn to just gray. You wanna keep some highlights. There's black underneath. I'm gonna work it in and make it kind of look like this water's furthest away. There's my thumbprint. You guys like your mistakes. Here you go. Boom, now it's a tree, it's a bush. There is no mistakes, just bushes. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and do that. I'm gonna do a little clear coat because I've been talking for a little bit. Not too much, and just a gentle touch. Work the water less, less is more. Back and forth even is okay. But really you just wanna like scoop it across. If you're sticking, it's too much. If you're sticking, you don't have enough clear coat. Um, that's for me stopping that little patch there, that little patch there, it's cause I'm going K -k 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 -k. Too much clear coat and it's gonna muddy the paint as well. So we're gonna work with this, but we just gotta be conscious of what we're doing here, so. So we're gonna keep that, how it kind of juts out a little bit. It looks like, wow, it's not just a flat static line, it's an actual landscape. If you're just tuning in, like scroll back a little bit and look back to how this painting started. It was a very, very basic um, kind of almost mistake right off the bat. And if you guys look what we did to kind of get out of that, um, it's a pretty cool little journey what you could do, covering things up, making it work. Um, we're gonna keep going though. Here we go. So you can work it in sections. You just do that section there. You come in, back and forth. Good. Now, corner. More clear coat. So that'll work. I'm actually gonna go a step further. I'm gonna put my respirator on for a minute because I just sprayed a ton. So uh, I'm just gonna go in with my palette knife now. I might add a little white onto the palette knife and then tap it in here and there, but I'm just gonna work the water a little tiny bit more. Oh, not with my hands, we're done with that.
There's another one, guys. There we go. Just kind of a little mess around painting. We did some mountains. Initially, we had like a stormy sky with a bit of lightning. We did a meteor. We did some more mountains, some more trees, and a bit of water. Um, hopefully, that was interesting. Let me look back through the chat here for a second, take a quick break. We're gonna do one more kind of mess around, kind of whatever painting. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna just try to answer some logistical questions from you guys for a few minutes. So if you have questions about really specific things I don't have to necessarily show you, let's rattle through, you know, 10 or so of those if you guys have some questions. And then from there, I'll take a few suggestions on what you'd like to see incorporated into a painting. I'll do that and that's gonna be a wrap on today's live video. If you guys are just tuning in, thanks so much. We broke 20,000 subscribers on this very live stream. That's a huge moment. I've kind of been very excited to achieve. So thank you for being a part of that. Thanks for tuning in. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. Follow me on Instagram, share your art with me. I love connecting with you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. We're definitely not done. Uh, but I'm going to take a quick break because I just kind of answer some of your questions. We're going to jump into our last painting of the day. Red, blue, pink, yellow, green. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys the quickest ever way to add a tree in your painting. Are you guys ready? It's just quick color I'm using. I'm just gonna do a quick little thing. Um, this can be kind of effective, I don't know, but it's really fast. this come in with your palette oh this palette knife is brand new brand spanking new kind of smearing and scratching at the same time get that bark in there Create these branches, taking that black that you sprayed down in a really fast, thin line, and you're manipulating it now to blend kind of with the background, kind of with what you're trying to do. I'm just going to create the illusion of branches in there. Little burl right there without even trying. Create even further layers by going over your meteorite or your shooting star, if you will. Anyway, there's a little tree. Play around with that. It's kind of a cool little idea. Anytime you see like more black stuff in here, feel free to, to keep 
chipping away at adding little branches. And it's nature, there's no wrong answers. You just do your thing and uh, try to get something that works. All right, let's do our last painting of the day. And I'll see if you guys have some questions here. I can't seem to blend the green away clouds, true star. Da, da, da. All right, I guess our only suggestion for the last painting is red, blue, pink, yellow, green, three planets. This yellow. And you didn't say which green, so I am using modern mint. That's a type of green. Okay, I'm. that's it. We're cutting off suggestions. I like the idea. I've never painted a volcano. We are going to do three planets with these colors and we're going to try to do a volcano i'm putting my mask on for this guys thanks so much for helping me hit twenty thousand subscribers uh this painting is going to be like in honor of that so even if it turns out like really shitty it's still for 20k subs thank you guys so much we're doing three planets with those colors Red, blue, yellow, green, pink. That's green. And we're gonna try to do a volcano. This is gonna be a, a crazy space scene. No logic needed. And I'm gonna put my respirator on so that uh, I can live to talk to you guys in a future video. So give me a quick sec and we'll saddle up here. So here's what we've accomplished today. We did this nice little landscaping, a bit of a departure from the normal stuff on the Aristotle channel. Uh, yeah, nice little scene. If you guys go back to the start of the video, you can take a look and figure out how to follow along and paint one of these for your own. Next up, just messing around, offering us some advice, incorporating a few different ideas more of a worksheet than a painting, but we did a couple different techniques and tricks. Got a shooting star up there, a nice little tree. Got some background trees, how to get some layered mountains. And we threw a cool tree in at the very end, this little burled uh, thing. I think it turned out pretty cool. Uh, spending zero time on it, it looks pretty good. So uh, last but not least, we're gonna do a little uh, painting with some, what are we doing, planets and volcanoes, so. As a reminder, if you guys are interested, it sounds like we're likely gonna be doing a little series here on the channel where I get to uh, weigh in on some of the work you've created. So I get a lot of submissions over on my Instagram. A lot of people uh, sending me their art, sharing along in these tutorials. If you're one of them, or if you'd like to be featured in a video where I kind of openly discuss with the Aristotle community uh, some tips and tricks to make your painting pop even more, 
uh, send me those paintings. Uh, in addition, you can tag me in your photos on Instagram. Same exact name as you see here on YouTube, Aristotle over on Instagram. And just let me know that you're cool with me, you know, including it in a future video. Uh, you might wind up seeing yourself and your artwork on this channel at some point. So let's dig in here. I don't know what I'm going to do for the volcano. So maybe we should map that. Hmm. Yeah, it's just going to be like here, I guess. I know what I'll do. Okay. I also put a call to action out on, you know, the community section of YouTube. It's kind of where I can do a little post and talk to you guys. Um, someone requested pyramids. We did one in a very, very recent, uh, tutorial but that being said we are going to throw them in here as well just to satisfy and then from there I'm going to toss my respirator on um, so that you know what two is fine two pyramids is plenty of pyramids okay Just a mist, that's all you need. All right, we're gonna try to go to sage green here. I'm gonna fill in my pyramids. Kinda, sorta, very, very light. Hardly anything on there. I'm going to just go in with Rust-Oleum Quick Color. Black, obviously, because you guys can see it flowing onto the page. Let's get you zoomed in just a little bit more. So from there, all you're gonna do to make a pyramid, lay them down initially, spray the border so you know you're not over spraying everything. Take your one most in the foreground. We're gonna have overlapping ones today. I'm gonna push this poster board down. I'm gonna press pretty good. We do want texture on this thing. So once I do that, I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna touch this down really quick just to make sure that I don't have any issues with uh, some of it not pulling up. And I can already tell this is gonna look pretty cool underneath. And I'm just gonna lay this one on top like so. And from here, we're just gonna continue on with our sky, uh, if you will. Our volcano is gonna come in somewhere more in the foreground, probably here, maybe even overlapping the pyramid slightly. Uh, so we're not even gonna worry about that. We're just gonna touch this top corner here. If you're just joining the stream, what is going on, guys? Been, uh, been streaming for, I guess, two hours and 20 minutes. I'm not gonna say it's been the most focused time. Um, we got sidetracked a little bit. If you're just tuning in, hit subscribe. We have just hit 20,000 subscribers here on this live stream today. So thank you guys so much for all your support. Very much appreciated. All right, so we are tasked. We're gonna do some pyramids. We're gonna do three planets with these specific colors over here, red, blue, yellow, green, and pink. 
and we've got a request for a volcano. So we're gonna do all of these things in one painting. It's just gonna be like a very kind of traditional, bright, vibrant spray paint art painting. Uh, so with this, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do our first planet. It's gonna be this guy right there. Shaking up my can here. Do a quick little burst just so I know where the planet's gonna be. Just leave a little negative space. This is a brand new can. I'm gonna shake it really well. I picked up three new colors today that I just didn't have. This one was new. We've used it in a bit. It's called uh, Modern Mist. So very modern. We got some marigold yellow and we got some real orange. So just like that little spray from here, I'm going to go in and we use our modern mint. Look how fancy that is. Build you a bookshelf like that and just paint it with this and you guys will be so modern. I'm gonna cover it. This was an event I did, let's see, this is how out of date I am. This is July 7th to 9th, this is from 2018, 2017 I think. But anyway, it's just a piece of cardboard, I'm gonna use this to kind of place down and swipe across this planet uh, just to basically smear it and it's gonna have a very cool effect. We often do the same, same, same uh, texture for all of our planets. So this is a bit of a cool technique. You can get some pretty cool effects. I'm gonna go over it one more time, I think. I might even come back on it uh, I don't want to swipe it with the same part though, so I'm going to use just this area. I dig that. I will tell you this much, I have way too much paint. Uh, so I'm going to dry that real quick. All right, that one is good. Next planet. So we got our green, we have our yellow. Let's do purple and blue. Um, and let's do, let's do something cool. Let's do a planet overlapping both of these pyramids. We're gonna get some depth in this painting one way or another. So uh, our pyramids are underneath, no need to worry about them. We're gonna go in. Find the planets to, you know, to make the job happen. It's like it's almost this one, but it's going to be too close. It's going to look awkward. So it's slightly bigger. No, that's the one. So back in again, we're going to. Missed, just so we know where to go. Shake our cans. For those of you who have struggles with paint popping through uh, other colors, you are not shaking your cans anywhere near enough. I guarantee it. Um, so that's that's the first place to look if you guys are getting like really pooly paint, kind of subpar results, then check your caps. Lots of different reasons. 
Matter of fact, let's get this one a clean. Don't do it in front of your painting though. Hope you guys are having fun. There's been a pretty static crowd throughout the whole stream. So once again, thanks a lot for stopping on by, spending part of your Sunday or Monday or whatever time zone you were in with me. Um, why don't you guys drop some you know, comments? Let me know where you're tuning in from. Last time we had people from like Croatia, all over Europe, um, all over the world. So hey, Shine187. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in for the very first time. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit the notification bell. We're starting to do these live streams quite a bit. UK, Germany. I love Germany. Um, my dream trip next is to go there. I'm a bit of a BMW fanatic. So Nampa, Idaho. I have been to Idaho, oddly enough. I don't think I've been to Nampa. Going in just with some blue here. Arkansas. Arkansas. No, I know it's Arkansas. That's pretty cool. Denmark. Wow. Portland. I love Portland. I've been there. California. Very much love California too. Hopefully everyone's having a nice summer. It has been very rainy where I am, but that's, uh, that's okay. Las Vegas. Got some love for Vegas. Colorado, Michigan. Wow, guys. Thank you so much. There's no Canadians in here though. It's a little disappointing. Where's my, where's my brethren, my Canadian pals? So I got an issue. Savannah, Georgia, wonderful. Welcome, I broke a cap off in here. I'm gonna get some needle nose pliers real quick. never really happened to me before Romania crazy I love hockey so it makes you part Canadian absolutely does that's an honorary Canadian right there can you say my name correctly um, I'm gonna say it's Delaius Garcia, that's my best crack at that name. Ireland, wow, you got quite the group. I'm trying to get this out, by the way, it's not really working. I think, I, I think I'm done with this white, that's tragic. I don't have another white, guys. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, quick color white it is. Delias, Delias, that's so obvious now, duh. Delias Garcia. Can you say my name properly? You gotta return the favor. So I don't have any more Rust-Oleum white, we're using this here and out. So, we got a planet going on behind here. Man, I get distracted. Pyramids, planets, people from all over the world, and someone named Del Delias Garcia. Just got done spray painting on my channel, came in and was, and you was on, that you do great work. Thanks so much, guys, uh, not right now. Like not immediately, because we're obviously in the middle of something, but at some point go give uh, ver the Variety Show Uncut a quick peek. Actually, I don't know, maybe that's a, maybe it's just spam. How do we know you're real, bro?
Yeah, but that's what you, you'd say you're real if you're not real. If you're a good, like, proper bot, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm real. Go, go click my spam link. I'm going to check it out later, and if I get a virus, I'll let all of you guys know. And if not, well, hey, then you guys should probably check it out too. Okay, we're going newspaper. Down on the thing. Lion King, he's genuine. Jebuine. I don't know what that means. Does anyone know what that means? Ooh, that looks nice. His likey. Look at the edges around there, yeah. The lines out from our pyramid. Okay, 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 okay. So here's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're not gonna do any block here. We are going to just use, I'm gonna use this. You can still use Rust-Oleum, but I'm gonna use Transparent Montana. And I'm just gonna shade in here a little bit. Most, most fades there aren't gonna be like, colorful planet to black, they're gonna have some mist, so I use that transparent. I really don't like how it's drying and it's pooling up, so I'm gonna just hit this with uh, my accelerated drying technique that I don't re recommend you guys doing. I never do this, and I've done it all day today, and I actually like the results, but don't burn your shit down, please. When I use newspaper, it always gets stuck to the paint, I have to throw it away. Yeah, but you gotta make sure you're either using your newspaper fast enough if you're using newspaper you might not be using enough paint so make sure there's enough paint so it all stays moist and get some clear coat and before you go in with newspaper give it a quick give it some love uh clear coat there you go so i'm going to just accelerate the drying yes you should be using gloss paper So it's doing a little bit of crackling or something going on down there. Uh, that's okay, it looks pretty cool. We're gonna go with that. I'm gonna do like a little bit of white up here and we're gonna roll on. Hey, name it, thanks for tuning in and uh, glad to be a little bit of an inspiration to you. That's what we're going with right there. You see how it like looks kind of real? If you're going to dry your painting with fire, use clear coat. That's what I did use. Maybe you're just giving advice to everybody else. I would say don't do that. Pookie, be positive. I'm super glad you started painting. That is awesome. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna motor here. Uh, I'm gonna do it one more time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this goes on. And so do we. Oh, I have more colors I had to do. I think all I have left is red. I used to use a blow dryer too. That's a better method, I think. I think it's still technically kind of sort of dangerous, but um, in these videos, I usually skip any kind of like blow dryer or anything and I just, continue and the results are not good. So what I do, uh, what I did today was, was I changed that up a little bit and it seems to be working pretty good. It is safer. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Just don't do what I'm telling you or what I'm showing you to do. Just be safe out there. Everybody. Okay. Last planet is a red planet. I don't think it needs to be fully in the frame but you, you wanna have it mostly in. I like my setup today. I'm able to kind of read as we go. 
Greg Altroje is saying, uh, we met a few years back to White Ave Art Walk. Good to see you still at it. Is that space heated? Hopefully winter won't slow you down. Uh, hey, hey, Greg. Um, the space can be heated. It's not currently because it is summer. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good down here. Thanks for reconnecting and thanks for uh, remembering me from all that time back. That's pretty awesome. Montana paint. Let's do a little experiment. I'm curious how Montana mixes with Rust-Oleum. We're doing just an honorary painting for our 20th thousandth subscriber. And uh, yeah, let's mix it up. It doesn't really matter. It's all about experimenting. Let me find out how this can works with Rust-Oleum so you guys don't have to. I'm gonna shake it up really good. Ruda, love your painting, sir. I love your comments, sir. Thank you so much. Make sure you subscribe. Guys, hit the notification bell too because that's how you know when this is happening. You don't have to come in like at the end and be all disappointed because you missed the first part. Good news is you can rewatch the video. I'm gonna shake this, it's gonna be loud, give me a second. All the way from India, wow. Thank you so much. There's a squad of different people from all over the world in here today and I love it. Hopefully you guys are painting along. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is not looking good. It's coming out funny. So I bought Montana only for some murals I did. And uh, I do kind of like it. Let's see how it mixes with Rust-Oleum. I can't resist as well. What we're gonna do, well, we're gonna use for the planet itself, we're gonna use all Montana, and then for the sky, we're gonna continue with Rust-Oleum. If I was there in your country, I'd love to, have, to learn from you. That'd be awesome, for sure. I've actually done a few in-person lessons before, and uh, the results are pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see, you know, with two people who are interested in the same thing, what you can actually get done. Good news is, this is kind of as good as your most people will get, but it's we're here together in a live stream. Everybody's learning, we're asking questions. This painting is happening from ideas, from people watching along. We got pyramids, specifically colored planets, and I think we have to do a volcano. Don't let me forget that part. We're not using that. Okay, we're just gonna use the red. Just the red Montana. And we're back to Rusto. We're gonna make this like a fiery explosion planet uh, to kind of be like a little omen about what's going down on this volcano that's coming in. Little bit of yellow. Brand new rye orange, real orange. Hi, Ruta. Hello. Thank you so much. All right, we're humming along 36 strong in the live stream. I don't know what good numbers are, but I'm really happy that like, 36 of you are spending a bit of your afternoon or evening or morning with me learning how to spray paint. So we got orange, red first, orange, red, yellow, orange. Uh, I didn't really think too much about the order of things. We're gonna go in and texturize this one, I guess, is the next step for us. I don't know if you guys saw this, but my spray can just sputtered a bit. And uh, yeah, we got some splatter. That's totally all good. Always spray your can off to the side. Don't just spray it because if there's a glump, glump, I use a lot of cool words. If there's a clog in your can, uh, you don't want to find out on your painting. Find out off to the side first. If you don't want 
this black to have splatteries on your painting up here. You gotta get close to it, but if you go close, you have to go real fast bursts and like hardly any paint and like be work quick because it will pool instantly up close. So there we go, that's good enough. Um, we are gonna go in, again, we're gonna use just some newspaper. Key here, we're going to wait just a second place it down and peel it back quick so this doesn't stick to the page. You can use a plastic bag. But keep in mind this is Rust-Oleum and Montana mixed together. Let's see if there's any weird effects or issues. No, pretty good. We're getting like none of the red yet. So we're going back in. little bit there. That'll work. That looks pretty good. Um, let's make this thing a light source, I guess. Makes it look pretty fiery. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm real... I, I got to figure something out here. I just broke another cap. So that's no, no fun. All right. I got to put my cans off to the side guys. We got $16 of spray paint down the drain. Boom, great for shading. The key is I have lots of storage for the paint over here. I'm just like lazy, I just wanna like keep painting. So I put them here and then I'm good and then I hit it. There's like a graveyard of stuff over here to the side. Fine. Just watch the ads in the next video <laughs> so I can buy a couple more cans, okay? We're gonna go in now. Really, let's try to do this. Okay, on we go. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Yes, I pay I paid nine eight ninety five or something for my spray paint today. No, it's not true. One of them was ten forty five, and I just broke two cans. That I pro I don't think there's anything I could do. I broke like this tip off both two cans, and it's like it's not the end of the world, but it is astronomically expensive. When I was traveling in the states, I saw Rust Oleum at Walmart for like three dollars, and I wanted to cry. All right, we're putting that down there. This guy up in the sky here. I'm gonna do something not part of it. We said do three planets. We are gonna go ahead and we're gonna do four planets. I'm gonna put this one here. There's a bit of like, you guys see this, like how that looks like a planet already? Tell me you guys are seeing this right here. Does it kind of look like a planet there already? There's a little bit of shading. So I'm gonna put this down over top of that. Now we're gonna do another one. 
but I'm gonna shade now just a little bit. Put that down there, very close by each other. That's what we're going with. Now it's time for some sky. Um, so what we're gonna do here, we have some yellows, reds, we have a blue thing going on here. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna do some red, yellow, and orange underneath. We're gonna put black down, we're gonna put stars down, we're gonna put a contrasting like blue or purple galaxy up here. And then we're gonna peel some of the fiery colors from underneath. Uh, and that's the game plan. But I'm gonna work pretty quickly here. So you guys will kind of see what's going on, hopefully. It's clear and you can follow what I'm up to. Light burst, light burst, hardly any black. Now we're going in with blue over the night sky. little trick to making stars. I'm going to spray some white on here and I'm just going to flick down. Now some of these stars are pretty big, that's totally fine. A lot's gonna wind up in the background anyway. I'm just gonna go in, no, you know what? I'm gonna go in with a little sponge action here and I'm just gonna kind of peel back some paint and reveal some of this uh, red and so we got blue in the sky now that looks pretty cool what we're gonna do is basically just pull up some of the red and yellow underneath how do you make the stars smaller uh, less paint and like harder flicks so uh, when you first flick down they're gonna be the biggest uh, so flick off to the side once maybe again and then really flick hard and straight down and you'll get them smaller and smaller as there's less paint on your finger. So as you guys can see, we're just gonna pencil in or sponge in just this little kind of nebula, galaxy, um, contrasting bit in the subtlety of our space sky. I'm going in, I'm covering up a lot of these 
bigger stars I didn't like so much. I'm using the kind of, I, I lost my white spray paint, so that's where we're at right now. That's all you need. It looks pretty good as is. I have this uh, transparent Montana gold. I'm gonna just lighten up the edges a little bit. Those are nice small stars that you can kind of see developing here. Now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to do a little bit of a border here on uh, one of these planets, two of these planets actually. And what I mean by border is I'm just going to do a little bit of highlighting around the outer, outer edge. All right, we are going to take some of these planets off here. Now this one looks a little off center. It's just cause I didn't get the border all the way around. I might actually try to put this down and just touch that up a little bit. Next up, I'm just gonna go in, do a couple little starburst effects here, get some stuff popping in the foreground. Let's take back. So this is weird. You got some paint coming up like I've never seen before. It's okay. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. And put that down. Make sure it's stuck. Okay.
All right, YouTube artists and aspiring artists. I took a crack at a volcano here. We did some weird stuff. Uh, we got some pyramids. We got some specifically colored planets. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad piece. I think there's a bit more time I could spend with it. I think this looks a little wonky over here, the way the shading came in. Kind of looks off round, but pretty cool painting overall. All right, thanks so much for following around, following around, following along. This has been a long stream. I really appreciate all the support, everyone who's tuned in. We hit 20,000 subscribers today. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully you had fun. I'm gonna give you a quick peek at the, uh, the fruit of today's labor. It's only three paintings, but we talked about a lot of stuff and we are ready uh, to call this a wrap. So let's take a quick peek at what we've done so far today. This was our first little landscape. If you go back to the start of the video, you can figure out how to create one of those on your own. Second painting was more of just a, a practice board because I unincorporated them into the very end. Last but not least, we have a volcano with some pyramids and some planets. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. We are all just trying to put some cool ideas down on the page. Keeping in mind, you know, they come from spray cans. It's a bit of a forgiving art, but it's also challenging to master. Every time you paint, you should just paint something that hopefully makes you a bit, you know, excited that you're pushing the envelope a little bit. I might come in and tool with this one after the fact, but it has been a very long uh, stream. So I'm gonna cut it off here. Thank you for 20K. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you guys again in a stream or a video very, very soon.